so I'm not gonna do anything like that! Hey, what's up you guys? Shortimus Prime here, doing another NECA Toys action figure review on three figures. I'm looking at the Series 1 Ash vs. Evil Dead, Hero Ash Williams, Value Stop Ash Williams, and Demon of the Mind Elagos. If you're trying to pick these up, you can get them at my Big, big, big! Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com! Click the link in the description below! And thank you so much NECA Toys for making this review possible. If you want to see the latest from them, go ahead and check the link in the description below. I'm really excited excited for these figures and look at this older Ash right over here. I love Ash vs. Evil Dead, uh, the whole Evil Dead franchise I just love. I think it's really funny uh, what they did over here on the front of the packaging. You can see there's two Ashes and they're the same exact Ash but they just photoshopped the shirt and the chainsaw. I don't know which one was the original but I think that's kind of funny. And a much younger looking Ash by the way. Anyway look on the side they say Ash vs. Evil Dead. Now on the very back you can see product shots of all three figures and then you can see that they all share the same read up. If you want to read it go ahead and pause it now. Then at the very bottom of all the Packaging, you'd see all the people responsible for creating these. All right, let's get to it and crack these things open. And here's all three figures out of the packaging. And I just gotta say, right at the very beginning, uh, obviously, my favorite one out of these three is the Hero Ash. I really like this figure a lot. I actually think all three of them are awesome, but yeah, that Hero Ash is so freaking cool, man. Look at that. Oh, that's sick. And he comes with the most interchangeable pieces, but all three of them are cool in their own way. Uh, I really like the Value Stop Ash and the L Ghost is really cool as well. I have my minor gripes here and there, but for the most part, I really do like all three of these. Anyway, let's take a closer look at them. Let's start with Elagos. As far as demons and deadites go, uh, this is a bit different from what I'm used to seeing in the Evil Dead verse, right? Uh, this is very different, but still, I mean, the voice of this demon and everything kind of just fits in. Being the mind demon was actually pretty cool. I thought this was actually a pretty awesome creature. Uh, not as cool as the final creature, but still, uh, I think this is really awesome. I love all the chewed up parts right over here on the side of the head. That looks really nasty. Uh, even little touches of yellow over there. That's really gross. And I feel like the color choice of this baby blue is very accurate. God, that's a huge old meaty piece right over there. That is so gross. So well done. Excellent sculpt and paint. I really love how the red isn't just solid red. It's like this very glossy, shiny red paint that they use. Of course, he has the mouth articulation and the tongue sticking out right underneath there. And then he has the same kind of wounds all over his body and blood dripping all over the place. Looking really nice. Ooh, looking so gross. There's not much paint detail going on as far as the blue parts go. I am seeing some color variation, so I think it's just like different coats, I guess. I, I'm not 100% sure on that, but you can see some, I, and the texturing is definitely there too, so I like that they have the added texture. So I think that's pretty cool. And get that more of that glossy red paint right over here and on the hands. Ooh, the hands look so gross. My favorite part of the figure though is the feet though, and we'll show that in just a second. I noticed right out of the packaging that I did get a little bit of weird gappage on this side, not so much on that side right over there. Guess I just have to reposition the ball joint because there's a ball joint in there, and there it goes, it's a little bit better. Looking at the legs right over here, you get a little bit more blood. And then it has some more pieces missing right over there. Oh man, looking so gross. Really dig that a lot. And he's got these weird legs right over here with these spurs. It looks like the bone just sticking out of the back. That looks really nasty. And look at those hand patas. Yeah, look at that. Ooh, so, so nice. I'm loving those. Really like the glossy black paint right there too. And it does not have peg holes underneath its feet, but wow, the details right there. That looks great. Now as far as the articulation goes, you can not really move the head up. You do get jaw articulation, which I showed earlier. Uh, you can move the head side to side and it will look down and you get some pivot in here so you can get those facial expressions, or not the facial expressions, but those gestures. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like those kind of like spastic movements. Anyway, the shoulders move outward just that much. And then you can move them downward pretty far. You can move them forward. You get an elbow bend right over there as well as rotation. And then you also get rotation at the forearm too. Uh, no, you don't get rotation at the forearm. It just bends at the elbow right there. And then you also get wrist rotation and it moves up and down. No torso joint. It would have been nice to have a diaphragm joint or something right there in the middle. Uh, but he does have these ball hinges right here on the hips so you can move the hips outward pretty far. 
Uh, it's kind of tricky moving them around, like if you're moving them just outward like that, that's as far out as they'll go. Uh, you kind of want to be careful, you want to find the joint and see where the hinge is so you don't bend against the hinge. So that's why I'm not trying to move it further outward on this side. I'm not, yeah, there it goes. I can see the hinge right there so you can see it bending more outward. I think on this one the peg is starting to come out a little bit so that's how I'm able to get this one just a little bit further. Anyway, you can move the legs forward only a little bit. Like I said, it's kind of tricky finding the joint right there. but you can turn that upper thigh joint around so yeah pretty see on this side I can get a lot more movement over there so I don't know I, I'm kind of scared to try to pull this joint out a little bit more so I do feel that in general it is a little bit limiting uh, but you can get the knees to bend that much you get rotation at the knees you get the ankle turning side to side it does pivot right over here and it moves up and down some and then same thing with the second ankle right here you get side to side movement and a little bit of pivot shop smart shop as smart you got that? Okay, they can't call it S Smart anymore. They call it uh, Value Stop now, so that's what it is. Value Stop, Smile, Ash, Stock Boy. Yeah, so he comes with two head sculpts. This is the first one of the two. Uh, I really like these a lot. I think they just nailed the likeness to Bruce Campbell. This looks absolutely fantastic. I like the hair right over here. It looks really good. You got the graying on the side. And then the mouth and the everything, they even got his real scar right over there and everything, nice wrinkles and all that, man. The eyes look good. You see, they're looking in the same direction off to the right. So, really good looking head sculpt. I really dig it a lot. Very good job. And you can swap this out with the other head. And this is the serious looking one. And there he is, looking very serious Bruce Campbell right there. A little elderly Bruce Campbell. Not elderly, but older Bruce Campbell, anyway. Uh, they did miss the paint a little bit on the eyebrow. I see some eyebrow sculpt right over there, not lining up with the paint. So that could have been done a little bit better. But still, I mean, the sculpt and the paint, for the most part, looks pretty solid to me. I really dig this a lot. Uh, now, I'm going to go back to the other head sculpt. Because he also comes with this little accessory right here, the little Deadite doll. And this thing is awesome. Look at all those little paint details on this tiny little thing. It's about as big as my thumbnail. Very, very small piece. It's got a little booty shoes and everything on there. And the scary looking mouth and all that. It even has paint detail in the hair. So really good job on this. Um, and then I have the other head sculpt on right there. So you're supposed to Try to plug this on Ash because it's all biting at his nose and everything like that. I wish they had some kind of definite clip. Oh shoot, I knocked the hand off. Okay, that's actually not surprisingly difficult to put back on though. Let's see. That looks like, yeah. Okay, so that's not too hard. And that came off from me trying to put this on Ash's nose and just really trying to get those hands to clip around his nose. But I find it best to try to stick a foot in his mouth and that, well, yeah, see, so it's kind of tricky. You can get it balanced on there. I was able to take some pictures, but you know, you gotta try to get the little doll right on there on his face. Oh, and there goes the arm again. I'm probably gonna have to glue that back on later. But anyway, looking at the rest of the figure over here, I really like how the shirt looks, the nice paint detail throughout, a little pen holder and everything looks really good. Nice wrinkles in the sculpt. And this is made out of a softer material, so it still kind of hinders the articulation, but I'm glad that they used this soft material because it doesn't hinder it as much as it would be if it was really hard plastic. Further back, you can see more wrinkles right there. Looks really good. And then there's his pants. Oh, and he has his wooden hand right over here. Nice details. You get the wood grain and everything. You get the wood grain and everything sculpted in there. It even has sculpted fingernails. You could pop this off if you'd like, so you can remove that. Uh, the other hand is actually on a ball joint. And then looking at the pants over here, you get some nice wrinkles. Not a whole lot of paint detail. Boots look really good. Nice laces and everything. He does have peg holes and tread sculpted underneath there. So yeah, not a bad one. Now as far as Ash's articulation, you get side to side movement over here, you can't get his head to look up uh, just that much and it moves down very little as well, so not that much head movement. And of course you get the side to side and some good head pivot right over there. Uh, that face is so funny. The shoulders move outward only this much. I don't want to push it more. I guess the right side can move out more than that. Then you get his arms all the way down. They can move forward. He does have a double jointed elbow so you can bend in that far and you get rotation at the forearm right there. Get rotation at the wrist. Uh, this one has a, a ball joint so you can move it up and down as well as rotate. Uh, there's a diaphragm joint in there and you can feel it move forward and back just 
just the tiniest bit, but not a whole lot. You get side to side movement, some pivot, and it crunches forward just a little bit and back just a little bit. He has hip joints that move all the way outward, and you can get him kicking forward, and he will move back a little bit. You get an upper thigh cut, single jointed knee, rotation at the knee, then you have a ball joint at the ankle right here, so it can turn side to side, down a little bit, up a little bit, and a little bit of ankle pivot. Now before taking a look at the Hero Ash figure, I want to look at his accessories, and we're starting off with his boomstick, which looks magnificent. I really like all the paint detail right here. Nice silver dry brushing, looking really nice. I do have a couple little scuffs. I can't remember if that's actually a scuff or part of the paint. I can't remember. But anyway, it fits into his left hand very well. He has a trigger finger sticking out right over here. I did get some paint kind of smudging between the, uh, and, oh yeah, that scuffs definitely the flesh uh, mixed on there. So it's a little tricky getting him to hold this. It just takes a little bit of finagling, but there you go. And then you get the trigger finger right through there. So that looks pretty good. I like that. I'm actually really liking that a lot. Fortunately, some paint came off on his thumb though. Uh, now he also comes with his mighty chainsaw. I did snap this little piece right over here. So be careful with that. I'll just super glue that later on. But yeah, a little unfortunate. I did snap that but the rest of it looks really good I'm really liking the paint detail on this Looks really nice and get the little handle piece right over there nice silver dry brushing nice sculpted details throughout really digging the chainsaw and you can just port this right into his wrist how he had it towards the beginning of the series uh, later on he gets this device uh, where he has his mechanical hand and he can remove the hand and then add the chainsaw so you get that feature right over there you just port that on there then you can add this to it and yeah again you want to grab it by the sides so though so now you have the chainsaw look that he had towards the end of season one uh, and then if you want the whole arm to have the hand you can just remove that forearm and replace it with this forearm right here and just pop that right on there and come on there it is and then you can actually have him with the mechanical arm or mechanical hand right there which looks fantastic a lot of nice little details in there nice color variation and everything I'm really digging that a lot that looks really good yeah but of course I'm gonna have him pose with the chainsaw and now uh, looking at this head sculpt it's just you know the look is very similar to the value stop one but he does have this added scar or blood splatter right over there he's gritting his teeth looking very mean again his eyes are both looking off into the same direction it looks like the left eye is a little bit more to the left than it should or to his right than it should be but still I think it looks all right nice wrinkles and everything they I mean they got this Bruce Campbell like down to a T, man. It's uh, pretty spectacular. I really like it a lot. Oh yeah, he also has a holster in the back for the boomstick, and that fits in there very nicely. But yeah, uh, he also has another head sculpt, and you can see he looks very concerned, and he's just looking straight on. So that's a pretty cool one too. Out of the two of them, though, I actually prefer this one. And if you wanted to use the head sculpts from the other Ash figure, you could do that as well if you wanted to. But I don't know. I like that other one. And now looking at his torso, I'm not seeing a whole ton of paint coloring on the blue area. Is not a lot of variation over there. I do see some, but it's very subtle. What I really like is the strap coming around over here, though. That looks really good. All the buttons are painted nicely. You get this nice brass color right here for all these little buckles, and you get some nice silver paint right there. I think that looks really good. Again, the little holster for the boomstick looks nice. There's the Ashley butt, and I think it's the same exact pants as the other one. Even the belt right there looks really nice. And then the boots and everything look really good too. Are they the same? Yeah. Yep. These are the same ones as the value stop version. But yeah, good looking Ash figure. I really like this one a lot. And then taking the boomstick, you can just see how it fits into the holster right over here. So that works out very well. I like that a lot. Anyway, uh, the articulation. You can't move his head up very far at all. That's as far up as it can go. So that's a little bit of a bummer. I wish I could look up more. You can't move down that much. You get side to side movement over here along with some head pivot. Uh, the shoulders move outward only that much on the the left side but on this side you can move the shoulder outward just like on the value stop ash you can move the arms forward you get double jointed elbows over here now for the mechanical arm or hand you can only rotate it right here at the forearm you can't move the hand side to side uh, on this side again we get the little ball joint so you can move in any direction you want to uh, you do get a waist joint that can turn side to side you get a little bit of waist pivot in here and some crunching forward and some crunching back you can feel the diaphragm joint inside here under 
underneath the shirt, but you can't really move that so independently from the waist joint. So I like that it's there, but you can't really use it too much. Uh, you get hip joints that move outward that far, and he does kick forward and he does kick backward due to the soft butt. Yeah, they used a different material on his butt. It's all soft and everything. Uh, <laughs> and it's just kind of a funny thing to say. Yeah, uh, Bruce Campbell has a soft butt. Anyway, uh, you get an upper thigh swivel right there. You get a single jointed knee. You get rotation at the knee, and then the ankles move down a little bit. They barely, uh, you can move them up some side to side movement, and you get ankle pivot. Now, to measure out these figures, you can see that the Ash figures are standing just a little over six and a half inches tall. Now, for a size comparison, here we have our new Ash versus Evil Dead figures compared to Farewell to Arms Ash. And then to compare them to another Evil Dead 2 figure, we have the Hero Ash. And you can see how much more silver we're actually getting on this chainsaw compared to this one right here. Kind of wish we'd gotten the silver trim going around for the chain. Uh, we don't have the silver chain right here on this one. And then here they are next to the Army of Darkness, Ash. Ash party, yeah! Ruby, smart, Ruby, stop of the line. Ruby, Ruby, Who's Ruby, laughing Ruby. now? Ruby. And then to compare these figures to a Marvel legend, we have the Juggernaut Build-A-Figure Waves Deadpool. Ooh, imagine an Ash-Deadpool team up. Yeah, wrap your head around that. And then here they are next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. So again, I really like these figures a lot. This Hero Ash is actually my favorite. Of course, it's going to be my favorite one out of the three. And I did swap the heads over here, so I have a Value Stop Ash head on the Hero Ash, which looks really cool. So that's another reason if you really want to get this one over here, you can do some head swapping. I still think it's a good looking figure. It's just my least favorite out of these three. Having the Elagos over here I think is really cool too. You know, the first villain that he really fights in the series and the TV show so I think that's really awesome anyway I do have my complaints you know I did break this little thing the little doll is very tricky to get on the ash face but I love that they included this such a cool little homage to the tiny little ashes from army of darkness I thought that was cool so I like having that piece added to it anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this review if you did please hit the like button go ahead and leave a comment down below let the world know what you think if you want to stick around I will have a subscribe circle popping up right over here uh, and I'll also have a video from one of my previous videos popping up down here as well so you can check that out if you want to see a photo gallery of images, it's all over at toynewseye.com. And please follow me on the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Links all in the description below. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.